Thanks for joining me. Uh, this is a uh, another tutorial showing our THG Automation uh, Universal Robots Fronius Welding System. Um, today we're going to talk about weaving, adding weaving to the weld parameters. Um, we discussed earlier how to use, you know, air moves, how to use um, the part or the edge detection, um, uh, some of the advanced functionality in uh, like the strip welding. Uh, so today we're going to discuss uh, just the weave uh, parameter itself. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add a, um, a weld in here. So we hit weld start node on the left side. Um, and when we do that, it automatically adds a weld start and a midpoint and a weld end. So that would be a traditional weld where you've got your start along this uh, demonstration here for this, uh, this, this aluminum uh, inside corner weld. Uh, start and then we'll put a midpoint in here and then we'll put something here at the end um, And then we'll talk about the weaving of it. So let's come down and let's just set up some points We're not really concerned about the accuracy of it. We'll just get in here uh, for aluminum. I used to usually put in a nice uh, Nice push angle. We want to be at about 45 degrees since the material thicknesses are the same uh, So we'll come in here like that and we'll hit create waypoint and then in this case, I'll just use my uh, navigation here, my, my arrows, and we'll come into the middle here and my move, move screen, press OK, and then we go to the end, and then we create waypoint again, and we go in the X direction again. And there we have it. So we've got um, a travel speed, let's change this to eight for purposes. Um, travel speed again here, which is eight. Eight, and then our start. Our start won't have any parameters in it because, uh, at least for for the movements, uh, other than the travel to the start point, because the start only dictates what happens at the start. From that point on, as soon as the weld starts, as soon as we get our arc start parameters, as far as our heat start, um, our gas uh, preflow, all that happens at the start. Once that all has taken place, we jump to the next node, uh, instruction node for that weld. So in that case, it'd be that uh, midpoint. So we're going to uh, turn the speed up a little bit on that. Um, it says we need to start at 13, um, the job 13, and then we can use scrape start. And then in the future, we'll talk about this enable wire sense, which is a really cool feature. Um, so let's go to our midpoint and our midpoint now dictates parameters for motion. So, uh, we've changed that to eight already. Um, and uh, we're going to leave the weave off for now just to show how this works. Uh, and then we'll go to the end. And again, we're going to leave the weave off. Um, and we could put a blend radius in, which you have of one for the midpoint. It could be zero, but we don't really want to stop. So um, we'll leave it as a default of one, which is a great starting point. Uh, to note, uh, in circular welds, you need to have at least one in the midpoint. Otherwise, it'll throw up an error. If you leave zero in your blend radius, it won't work. Uh, for circular welds. So let's hit start and let's just see this run. Um, it's a simple weld. Um, we've got, you know, travel speed of eight millimeters per second. We're calling up job 13. We're not welding right now. And um, so it does what we expect. It just travels at eight millimeters per second along this part. Uh, I will note that this, we're going to call this our X direction. It doesn't correlate. It just happens to correlate with the move screen and which direction the X was. Uh, in the screen, but actually the direction of travel when you're welding has to do with, that's your X direction only. So if we're going this direction, it's still X. If we're going up, it's still X. So the direction of travel of the weld is always in your X direction. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to stop. Um, I'm going to keep this program from looping. Um, so let's add a weld or a weave. So we're going to jump into, because our weld start doesn't really have any weave parameters in it, it doesn't have any motion um, uh, motion specific instructions in it. It's just about the start. So we'll go to the midpoint and we're going to add a weave. So we hit the checkbox there and it comes up with our default parameters. Uh, right now our weave is at 90 degrees. So as we talked earlier, in this case, our X is in this direction. Our X is always in the direction of travel. If we're doing a circle, our X will always change because it has to go around a part. Uh, in this case, we're just running a straight line. So X is in the direction of travel. The weave angle, if you see on uh, right underneath that checkbox under add weave, 
that direction is set at 90. 90 is in reference to that direction of travel. So it's going to be 90 degrees to that, which means it's perpendicular. Um, and we call that the, the Y direction. So it's basically we're offsetting the Y of the, uh, the, the uh, travel, uh, making the travel in this direction uh, or the X. Um, we've got a pitch. The pitch is five. So right now, the pitch being five, meaning this, we got the center point of the weld. It goes up, back down, and then back up in five millimeters. If we make it three millimeters, it makes it shorter. So it goes up, down, up. Uh, so the lower the number, the faster the weave. Um, so be careful with that. Faster weaves are not usually good. Arc stability goes out the window, um, creates a lot more spatter. Um, so when you use weaves, always use weaves with a specific purpose, a reason. Don't just add it to add it. Um, so uh, our, our weave width is going to be how far up to the left. And our direction of travel being the X in this direction, our, our left is to the left of that. If we're facing the direction of travel and our right is down to the bottom, which again is in reference to the direction of travel. If our travel was going back and forth, it would turn our left and right back and forth or back to the up and down. But let's say we're traveling um, and we're going uphill and we're going straight up. Well, straight up means that then our left ends up being to the left side, true left side versus it just being left as up and right as down. So just remember that in the direction of travel, left is always the left side of the weld in orientation with the torch and the right's always the right side in orientation to the torch. And that's our why. So let's add, uh, before I get too much more diatribe there, um, let's add another weave to our end. That way, when we start, we weave to the midpoint and then we weave to the end point. Um, if you don't want to weave between the midpoint and the end point, don't put a weave in and the end point parameters, which is what you see right here. So um, let's hit start and see what happens. So we've got a nice smooth weave, uh, left, right, left, right, left, right. Um, it's in a pitch of five millimeters. So each left, right cycle is five millimeters in distance apart from each other or from the center point to the center point. Um, and then we have a width of four. So our four is going four millimeters wide, including the left and the right. Um, so it's a great tool if you need it. Um, and you can use it for, you know, whatever you'd want to use a weave for. Um, adding, um, making your, your weld wider, adding more heat to the, to the, uh, um, the material uh, versus the root. Tons of ways to use it. Um, we won't get into that today, but um, just to, uh, showing some examples. Um, so let's, let's say we want, um, let's say we want to put more heat into the sides of the weld. So, you know, we're, we're our weld standing up or we want to wet it out or we you know, maybe we got a reason our, our material on one side is thicker than the other. Um, we want to dwell. Let's say we just want to add a dwell left. So let's put two in our um, in our dwell left, which will be up in this case. Direction of travel is that way. Um, let's do that again for our end. Let's go two. All right, in our left. So let's check it again. Our left has a dwell of two, and our right is zero. So let's start and see what happens. So if you notice, the weld is actually staying to the left longer um, and the right is just acting normally. So let's say your material is a lot thicker um, and you want to put more heat into it for some reason, you want to use this, this function, um, you can use that. Um, so lots of, lots of little tricks you can do with the, the dwells. Um, let's hit stop. Um, let's say we just want a wider a weave and we want to spend more time in the left and the right. So we're going to change the other parameter to two and press OK. And then for our midpoint, we'll just put two in here as well. So before we finish, let's let's do something. Let's say we want to add three to the right. So if you notice the box turns red. The, the reason why that is is because now our... Uh, the combination or the the the, the 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 dwell left plus the dwell right equals five. Well, if you notice, we'll go back to two. If you notice our pitch is also five. Well, if we did that, 
that means there's no time for the torch to jump from the left to the right. It's just there's zero zero space to do that. You'd have acceleration issues. So we put in the calculations for you. So if you you know put in a number that's too big um, or just incompatible, then that'll that'll show red. So let's uh, check these and let's hit start and let's see what happens. So I mean, we only have, basically we have a dwell left of two millimeters, and then we have a dwell right of two millimeters, which leaves only a millimeter of time for the, the torch to jump from one side to the other, since our pitch is actually five total. So um, this would be, you know, a, a situation where you're wanting to put a lot of heat into your two plates. You don't want to be into the, the root of the weld for very long. Uh, you could use it for that. Um, so let's go back um let's say that you don't want to widen the well but you want to create a cosmetic look you want to you want to add cleaning you want to you know just create a, a, a something that you would do by hand um let's go in here and let's remove our dwell lefts and dwell rights and let's change the angle to zero So now our weave angle is zero, and we still have a five pitch and a four width with no dwells. So let's try that and see what happens. So now we have a back and forth function uh, instead of going side to side or left and right. Uh, this is great for if you want to create, um, you know, a, a more penetration. Um, uh, or if you wanted to clean butter, or if you wanted to uh, just get a better cosmetic weld, if you want to, if you got some gap changes along the weld and you're trying to flush that out, trying to smooth it out, uh, this is a great way of doing that. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, you can use 45 degrees if you like, you can use 30, you can use 70, heart's content, um, you can use whatever you want. You can mix in, let's say if you want to put dwells in there, let's say you want to put in a dwell right of two uh, on your start and your end. You can do stuff like that. So you can spend more time at the front or the back of the weld. So now it's spending more time on the front and then it jumps back and then it goes forward again, spends more time in the front. You can do it the other way if you want. Um, we can go zero um, on the right, which is the front and we go two on the left, which is the back. So when it steps back, It'll stay now for two millimeters of the total pitch, and then it jumps forward, and then it comes back and spends um, two millimeters of that, that cycle time on the back. So let's try that. So if you watch, it goes forward, comes right back, spends more time in the puddle, goes forward, comes back, spends more time. So a little trickier you can do with it. It's pretty cool. Um, in future videos, if you notice, if we, uh, if you go to the right of the add weave checkbox, you've got enable seam tracking. So seam tracking is automatic. As soon as you hit that checkbox, it will allow you to start weaving. And then in the future, if you notice, there is a track only Z. So track only Z would be great for if you're doing multi-pass. Let's say you do a seam track. Um, we'll have a future uh, functionality coming soon where when you come back and do another pass, maybe you only want to do Z. So in our direction travel, like we talked about, that's your X, our Y is side to side based on the direction of travel, and our Z is straight in and out. So that basically lines up with the torch. Well, let's say if you want your stick out to stay the same all the way through, you could actually just turn on your Z axis uh, tracking, and then it won't actually track side to side, it only tracks in and out. So cool stuff. Um, We'll talk about those in future videos. Um, send us a comment on YouTube or on our website uh, if you have any questions. Uh, some also functionality we want to talk about later is wire sense, uh, like we talked about earlier. So, um, yeah, like really cool stuff. Um, and uh, come back for more. Appreciate your time.